Well, hello for the second time this morning. I'm going to try redoing my thought for the day because for some reason Facebook on the computer, it just keeps breaking it up. And I'm finding listening to um, both Reverend Richards and uh, Debs, the same things happening. So I'm trying on my iPad to see if that's any better. Um, hopefully you'll be able to hear the whole thing rather than just get the gist of what I was trying to say. So a few weeks ago, my sister-in-law's brother-in-law, Sandy, died. We've met him a few times over the years and on those occasions he's always been very interesting to have a conversation with. His funeral service in Perth, Scotland, like all funerals at the moment, had limited numbers and for the benefit of many family and friends, both home and abroad, the service was live streamed from the crematorium. Brian and I watched it on my iPad and the elderly minister that conducted the service was good, very good considering apparently he was the third choice because everybody else uh, for some reason couldn't do it. And the elderly, and but he left that tribute to Sandy, son also called Sandy. It was a well-crafted and very thoughtful talk. One of those eulogies that if you close your eyes, the person is there in front of you. Judging by the tribute, he was much loved and valued man. As a minister, I value the contribution made to the eulogy that can be talked about their loved ones. And I can make notes and weave them together, but it will never be as personal as one written by a relative or a friend, even if I actually stand and read it for them. And what I tend to do in those cases is have a copy and stand beside them. And then if for some reason they can't carry on, I just kick in and it looks like we planned it all along a bit like a, a Morecambe and Wise sketch and nobody's none the wiser but that's only happened a few times most people it helps writing it first and then they can deliver it I've even had the privilege of reading two eulogies of close friends dictated to me just before they passed away I thank them for placing their trust in me to talk about them on their behalf actually, and allowing me to grieve with them as we pray together. Ministry to the dying and to their family has always played a big part in my vocation as a priest and a nurse. Isn't it a shame that so often we only learn the truth about someone after they've died? How many eulogies have we heard about departed loved ones only to realise that we barely knew them? Wouldn't it be wonderful to let people know now how much we value them and what an impact they've made on our lives. We don't want to leave it until it's too late. You know the old saying, tomorrow never comes. So we could write them a letter. Something that's not done very often these days, I know. Send an email or simply an open conversation with them face to face or even on the telephone. It's often said that people would have been amazed at the tributes received after they died. Why don't we pay those tributes while they're alive? Are we afraid that they would become conceited or that we or they would be embarrassed? Isn't it that sad? Many people live feeling undervalued, believing they are of no real importance or significance and yet God values every single one of us. We may not all be spiritual giants, but we all have the significance of being in God's kingdom. Perhaps we could risk it and tell those who've made a real difference to our lives that we really value them and how much they mean to us. Even if we're not spiritual giants, let everyone who comes our way know that they are valued all the same. So chat to all your family and friends and enjoy finding out about them as a person. Amen.